All right, guys, we have a lot of great information to cover. My challenge, uh, both for the people that are here as well as the online people that are consuming the streaming, is getting all of this information done in only 20 minutes. So let's just talk a little bit about, uh, let's go into play and get started. Hopefully we see a little bit about me. I've actually been with Adobe for a long time and spent most of my background with the digital video products, so things like Premiere and After Effects. And it's just so exciting to be with the, uh, the content team. And now you're going to actually get to see, as my slide advanced for me, some great content. This is done recently all with stock video to give you a sense of what can be done with stock video. All right, so that's great. You get a sense there's all different kinds of types of content that you can get, all different kinds of needs. When you think about a stock library, specifically a stock video library, there's all kinds of content that are needed by all kinds of people. And we're going to talk a little bit about gear, a little bit about some tips, some strategies for being successful, a lot about um, some of the, the metrics, what the things that are going on in terms of a video explosion. So just to get started on my right, perhaps your left, uh, we've got the basic stats. We're at 63 million assets, and you think, wow, that's, that seems like an awfully large amount. But the, the idea is that we need more content, and people are always looking for new and fresh content all the time. One of the ideas is this 85% number, which I always think is the most important here, which is 85% of people who are licensing content of any different kind. Right? Could be video, could be photos, could be anything that we currently license and sell. 85% of those people are opening it up with an Adobe product. And the other way of flipping that around is saying that we have the stock licensing market. You know, our creative cloud subscribers need to create content then faster than ever before. And stock can be a great help in making that happen. Let's just quickly go through some of the current updates. Uh, there's, with a company like Adobe, there's always so much going on, so I wanted to quickly whip through some of the things that have happened in the recent time. So back in June, we uh, announced the newest version of Creative Cloud, and along with that, we launched a premium collection. So while we have 63 million different assets, there's only 100,000 that are really the best of the best that constitute the premium collection. So the very highest, some of the world's best photographers in the world are able to contribute to this kind of premium collection. So if you're looking for some of that very, very high-end aesthetic, uh, you know, it's curated, it's put together. That's a great aspect to look at. For us and for me personally, integration is always one of the most important things for me about Adobe. And so if you're on the Adobe stock website, I'm able to, like I like that image of that, of that boy with the skateboard and the sunglasses. He's, I'm able to, with a single click, launch from the website, launch Photoshop or Premiere or whatever, download a preview of that image and have that integrated directly into my application. So that's always an important thing. Finally over there, uh, the last piece is make a masterpiece. If you haven't checked that out, I really encourage you to take a look at that. There's a lot of fun. It's actually a little microsite. You can take a quick picture of that, um, which is there's lost pieces of artwork, right? So, uh, but we have photographs of them. And so we commissioned a couple of great Photoshop artists to go and recreate those using nothing but Adobe Stock. And some of the results are really amazing. And it's a great little microsite to show you some of the how certain layers were created and some of the images that were used to create that. So a lot of fun there. In terms of what we've got now and what we're announcing at Photokina, Actually new this morning, I really encourage you to check it out, the new stock contributor portal. And this includes video. So if you go to contributor.stock.adobe.com, 
you're going to see a new Adobe experience for uploading and becoming active as a contributor. Uh, and it's a great new experience. It's the first time we're bringing an Adobe-like experience to the contributor portal. And so we're very excited about that. That launched just today. Also, just quickly mention, deeper integration from Lightroom and Bridge. So if you're contributing images, this isn't about video, but if you're contributing both images uh, to via Lightroom or Bridge, you're able to do it directly from those applications. So again, the integrated experience, connecting the desktop apps and the contributor experience with the consuming or licensing of stock content, really important. And then finally, auto keywording. Again, only for images right now today, but when you go to the website, and I upload an image, I can see one of a, a Halloween pumpkin or something like that. It'll automatically pick out the word pumpkin and maybe it'll, it'll do Halloween. So when you upload your images, it's an intelligent machine-based learning attempt to add the keywords for you, making your job as a contributor that much easier. All right, so let's talk about the stock video market in terms of context. At the end of the day, what it's really about is creating an easy experience for people to create content. You have great content. Chances are you have thousands of images and probably a lot of video that you've shot that you've not put to good work. The idea is though that there is more content being created than ever before and therefore this is an opportunity to help accelerate that content creation and I want to kind of dive in and talk a little bit about that. So we hear digital disruption and transformation. 85% of people are under pressure to create more content more quickly. My response to that is, what are the other 15% talking about? Because I've been in this business, I've been in the content business for 20 years, and in my entire 20 years, I've never had a job or a gig where I, you know, I've got more time, more money, more resources to create this content. No, it's the opposite. Content is accelerating all the time. Almost three quarters of these people are being asked to create 10 times the amount, right? Because it's not just about, hey, video, I go to TV. Uh, or I'm, doing, I'm the InDesign layout. Or I'm the, uh, the web layout. No, I have to do all of these simultaneously. And chances are, I'm the only guy that's doing it. And then finally, personalization. Everyone has, by the way, you have no excuse not to contribute to stock video, in my opinion. Because everyone has an HD capture device in their pocket. This is my personal phone. This is my personal HD capture device. Now, if you're marketing to me, you can market to my phone. But if you know it's Dennis, you know, Dennis has got, um, he's into outdoor sports. He lives in the New York area. He's a middle-aged guy. His favorite color is purple. All of that stuff, whether it sounds relevant or not, is an opportunity to get customization so that you can say, oh, he likes outdoor sports. He likes purple. I've got a special on a new purple mountain bike. Let's give that to him but that means you create more content, right? So if I have to create a version for me and a version for you and a version for everyone else, that means we have to create more. Quickly, because I'm already falling behind time, there's a bunch of quotes. Do these quotes represent you? When I do this, a lot of people go nod their heads and I see some nodding heads right now. It's like, yes, I always have to create more content. Now, this is about video and I love talking about video and we are dealing with a video explosion. Out of curiosity, how many hours of video do you think the world consumes per day? Shout out an answer. Anyone? No brave souls? That number, frankly, blows me away. A hundred million hours per day. Think about how much video is being consumed. I put that into a lifetime. If you, 80-year-old person, from the time they're conceived to the time they leave this earth, that's 142 lifetimes of video per day, right? 8 billion videos consumed per, by Facebook alone. Not counting YouTube, right? Here's the other one. In terms of worldwide video content consumption. By 2020, 80% of all internet traffic is going to be video. Yes, a lot of that's Netflix, a lot of that's YouTube. But think about all the amount of content that needs to be created. So I've prattled on, if you will, for several minutes about what all the, the, the metrics, what is the opportunity? Can I make a living at it? The absolute answer is yes. Today, the stock video market, just today, 
is hundreds of millions of dollars per year and growing. If you're shooting a camera, I know there's a lot of photographers here, it's as simple as flipping a switch and turning into movie mode in order to start capturing HD or even 4K video. But this is a great poll quote. If you're interested in looking into this business, this is available on, in Kindle or Amazon or whatever. Um, stock footage, how to be a stock footage millionaire written by Rob Crocker. Great poll quote. He started off initially with making like 50 bucks in a month, you know, just kind of threw some stuff up there. Wow, I got a sale. He saw the potential and capitalized on it. And then imagine now making $35,000 a month just with the content that's working for him on an ongoing basis. Right, that's really powerful. He's making thousands of dollars in his sleep. And again, we live in a world of digital revolution, right? We're, we're consuming content whenever, however, at whatever time, in whatever way is convenient for us, right? So maybe now at this point you've said, okay, I see that there's a lot of stats talking about stock video and the need for more video content. Why would I want to contribute potentially to Adobe Stock? And for me, the answer really comes down to two. One is the creative community, and the next one is the integration. I've kind of touched on both of those already. But the creative cloud customer base represents the largest single uh, customer base for people that license stock. Remember I, earlier in the, the presentation, I talked about 85% of people that license stock content, whether it's video, whether it's images, what have you, open it up in an Adobe stock application, oh, excuse me, Adobe Stock, an Adobe application. So it's a great opportunity to have your content showcased in front of the world's largest creative audience. And the other one is integration. So I'm going to a couple of slides over there on my right. You see a screenshot of Photoshop on my left, your right, and then Premiere on the other side. And it, there's no plugin, there's nothing to add. It's integrated directly into the application. In fact, if you're using the latest versions of these two applications and you open up the application, you'll see on the very first screen the, what we call the command new dialog box. I do want to do a new project, I want to open up a project, what have you. What you see is a stock banner where you can go and initiate a stock search. Our applications are arguably opened up millions and millions and millions of times a year. What a great opportunity, all right? Now let's quickly kind of talk about how to maximize earnings. And I'm, I'm giving another presentation at the motion stage at Photokino a little bit later, so you'll also be able to get some more information there. But first thing is, is understanding your audience. You have to understand that Adobe Creative Cloud addresses and meets all different kinds of audiences, whether it's from the soccer mom to the largest enterprises in the world, right? So you can kind of get started with whatever kind of market segment that you want. You can also get started by shooting whatever kind of content that you love. If it, is it natural landscapes? Is it travel photography like Aliyah just presented earlier? Great, go do that, right? In terms of how to become successful and profitable with Adobe Stock specifically, one of the key things for us is contributing regularly, right? So make sure that you're doing your time Putting in, your pro, uh, putting in your content on a regular basis. If it's a couple weeks, every month, whatever, why? Because that's going to be able to bring your ranking up. Ultimately, we're like, hey, here's Joe. He contributes every couple of weeks. We want to make sure that his content is brought higher up in the search results. One of the things, if you're new to stock content or contributing to stock content, is understanding that you need model and property releases. So in other words, if you shot a video of me, I'd happily sign a model release, but ultimately, I am the intellectual property rights holder of my likeness, right? So if I shoot a, a, a video of you guys, I need to get a model release that says, I authorize Dennis to be able to use my likeness in this video, okay? So something to think about. Those forms are provided on the stock contributor portal, so we do everything that we can to make those super easy for you. The biggest thing here, and if you walk away with one tip, is the idea of keywording. All right, so here's a great image of, the, of a, a clock on a pink background, and you've got all the keywords that are associated with that image in alphabetical order, which some people do. But is above the most descriptive keyword for that? No. I would say that these ones that I've put in bold are the most important ones, right? And so the way the Adobe system works is we want to put the most important keywords first because other systems allow you to put 50 or even more keywords and we would kind of call that keyword spamming. There's a certain point at which those keywords are not as valuable. So we put the most important 
ones first. And so the right way to look at that is seeing the image or the order of the keywords like that. That's going to allow you less work because you have to put in less keywords to make that content searchable and findable by the people that want to license it. Uh, and it's easier, OK? So just quickly recapping, the big thing here is think like a buyer, right? Think like, a, I want to buy this image. What is the keywording that is going to help me to make sure that that person finds it? All right, what are the video specs? I know for a lot of photographers, people get all weirded out about the technical details and stuff like that. It's the same. It's easy. It's accessible. It's not a problem. So in terms of what constitutes a video clip for Adobe, it's anywhere from 5 to 60 seconds in length. The size no less than, you know, no more, excuse me, than four gigabytes. We're really focusing on 1080 and 4K content. However, if you have 720, which is a little bit smaller and a little bit older, we'll accept that as well. One thing to note is when you submit or shoot 4K content, we automatically make an HD version. Now, when we talk about this, uh, HD clips for sell for $80 US and 4K clips for $199 or $200 US. So the opportunity to earn revenue on a per clip basis is very, very high. Finally, on sound, really important, if I have some music, some, you know, my favorite band is playing in the background, can't have that on the clip because, again, just like my likeness is my intellectual property, same thing with the music. Capitalize on trends, all right? Believe it or not, when you look at these, these are some of the current trends. We actually did an analysis on the Pokemon Go. If, does anyone have Pokemon Go? No? We're all too grown up. My kids all immediately downloaded it. And I was on vacation. I was seeing people like walking around doing this the whole time, right? And so people that capitalized on that early on actually saw a lot of stock video sales. So it's really interesting there. 4K, natural lifestyle, aerial drone, all great areas of exploration that are being uh, trafficked a lot on Adobe stock right now. Finally, as we kind of wrap up, Think about trademarks and logos. Take a look at that picture of the car. Notice it doesn't say it's a Ford or a Lexus or, you know, whatever. It's generic, right? Trademark. If you shot a video of in Cologne, looks great, but you see a FedEx truck in the background. Can't do it because the FedEx logo is a trademark and it's a problem. That becomes what's called editorial type content. And we don't currently support that right now. So when we talk about the contributor pro program, these are the four kinds of uh, assets that we currently support right now. I'm obviously speaking about video. We've talked a lot about why Adobe stock right now. And to me, it's really, it's an opportunity. You can get in at whatever level you want. You want to do it part-time? Great. You want to do it full-time? Great. You want to accidentally do it? Like, hey, I've got a hard drive full of content. Let's see what we can do. All right? All of these are opportunities for you to get on there. So in terms of content needs, a bit of an eye chart right there. I've emboldened a few of the ones that I think are really important. In terms of the requirements, keep it authentic. Shoot what you love. Make sure the technical execution is great. And the idea of keeping it fresh. Like these, you know, the, the, the shirt styles five years from now is not going to be something that we care about. So we're always looking for fresh content. Again, the website is contributor.stock.adobe.com. And right on time, I am out of here. Thank you so much for your time.